Hello world, my name is Tim Russell and welcome back to another daily game dev video. I'm the developer of a game called Battleborn Tactics, which you can wishlist down below. You totally should do that. I'm going to be talking about my long-term plan to uh, success. And we're going to talk about the word success in a minute. Uh, but I, I wanted to talk about kind of how I approach game dev and, and what I'm thinking about. Because I currently do not make enough money off of game dev to live. But that is the plan. And I've got a plan to get there, and I've spent a couple years uh, headed that direction, but I believe one day I'm going to get there, and I want to kind of share, because I don't think I've really talked about this, like how what, how I think about things and like where I'm headed and like what I'm trying to do. So if you're trying to do the same thing, if you're trying to build a business around game dev and something you're passionate about, uh, you can follow me and my journey, and you kind of think about some of the same things that I'm thinking about. Um, over long term if if you're still dabbling in game dev and you're still making your first game and all that stuff that's great Th this is maybe a little uh, beyond that but maybe maybe you can gain something uh from kind of thinking about this stuff so uh first up the the number one thing uh I, I had to define what the hell successful means i really hate the word successful is a stupid word okay uh you you have everything from uh from from people in the YouTube comments saying this coming from a guy that launched an indie game that failed failed or, or these, uh, why should I listen to you you're not successful you, so you've got that spectrum of people right the people that are like using that as a weapon but then you've got the other spectrum of the people where when we look at success we look at like Fortnite or some of these games that are just like stupid like I think Fortnite made like 1.8 billion dollars or something like that like fucking Minecraft ridiculous like stupid unattainable like shit that like if you put in a graph next to all the other indie games it the graph doesn't look like anything because it just blows everything out of the water right the 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 stuff that's so crazy as far as sales goes that it's just it throws off all the other data uh i'm not aiming for that end either uh i think how i de determine success is consistently profitable that's what i want I don't necessarily want a hit. I don't want to. I don't want to make a million dollars. Sure, that'd be nice. Like if I make a game and yeah, a million people buy. It, but like, I don't plan on that, right? Um, those are the outliers. Those are the crazy, um, crazy people that have the perfect design at the perfect moment, right? And they they do like the the perfect thing, and like they may not even know it was the perfect thing. It's just that stuff is not reproducible. Right? If you look at almost any one of these games that's been a major hit, their follow up game almost never even comes close to it uh and you know it that's just a path of life so when i look at my business when i look at what i want to do it's make consistently profitable games that's what i want to do so in the future if i ever say the word successful it's a you know it's part of our terminology so it comes up a lot but it that's what i mean that's that's my goal is i is i want to make consistently profitable games and and keyword here is that uh it's okay if the first few games are not because i feel like as long as i'm doing better or i'm learning or i'm are moving towards the goal uh over time uh then uh you know i'm gonna get there uh so number two the the second thing that i'm really really thinking about and this came up um quite a bit over the last year because if you don't know when i launched Phallophobia on itch uh last year february of 2000 19 um i then started on a new project called cypherpunk which was a stealth hacking roguelike and it was a procedurally generated game uh that was way beyond the scope of what i was capable of but it was something i really resonated with and it was something off of philophobia because philophobia was such a static designed game right like i handcrafted all the levels i put every pixel in that game uh cypherpunk was complete procedural it was all algorithms it was all um code that was generating the entire game and so i i bit off a little more than i could chew there but i just kind of kept scoping up and adding stuff and it it took like six months to even figure out what the hell the game was like we didn't start at stealth hacking roguelike i started with like a little puzzle game um but one of the things that became super ap apparent with that was uh reusable code reusable code and a tool set and this is something that i learned back with my marketing company because um I, I call it a marketing company but really we were like a full service agency so what i did a lot for clients is, is people would come to me and they'd be like I, I i'm looking to get extra clients but we as a company would end up making them a website 
sometimes a logo sometimes we do an ad campaign sometimes we do um technical stuff like a lot of times they needed marketing but they needed uh tracking infrastructure for marketing or like affiliate links and stuff like that to be able to track uh so we would build a lot of technology and one of the things that i really 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 helped with that company was was building up this code base over time and every time i got a freelance contract um i started putting in the proposal that i owned the code but that they got a uh a lifetime uh non-exclusive license to it meaning that they would pay me i would make the code they could do whatever they want with it really uh because they got a lifetime license to it but i still own it meaning i could use it on future projects because it's it's like stupid to rewrite the same code over and over again right so um what ended up happening is is that kind of had a um exponential growth effect on my company because uh in the beginning, like it was, we would get these, you know, contract works five, 10 grand for like this big, like infrastructure platforms or login portals or that kind of thing. Um, and it'd be a lot of work, right? Like, like, like 10 grand, but three months of work with like two or three developers, like that shit was, we were losing money on that. But after we do that a few times, then we get a 10 grand deal where we've got 80, 90% of the code there, right? So suddenly that's, way more profitable and for some reason uh i decided to do things the hard way when i came back to game dev i was like hey you know what i should do i should throw everything out every time i make a new game and start over and that's a dumb idea so uh one of the things i really really been paying attention to especially with my my renewed focus on like game dev and and the fact that i've now that i got follow phobia out of the way which was like this game that i felt like i needed to make i personally feel like i want to focus on smaller scope single player strategy games almost mostly grid based those are the kind of games that i really enjoy and those are the kind of games that there's not a lot of out right now and i feel like i'm the most equipped to deliver those games because i love strategy games but i hate complexity and i hate youtubing and learning stuff and if you've been watching my videos every day you probably have seen me talk about this but that's kind of see that's kind of where i see the next uh, one, two, three years of my life is making several small scope grid based strategy games. And as I'm, as I'm thinking about that, I'm like, there's a lot of code. There's a lot of pieces to this that I can reuse for this stuff. And for, uh, battle barn tactics, um, we've reused a lot of code from cypherpunk, which, you know, luckily it's not like a nine month throwaway project. There's a lot of code in there that was written, uh, very complex, very intricate code that does interesting things um that i'm pulling out of there now i'm using uh, an engine called construct 3 which is kind of like a drag and drop engine which makes oh which makes that stuff kind of a pain uh but they do allow javascript and so with the addition of javascript we've started building like a library of stuff that i can pull between projects and i've started learning godot which is much more um friendly with with that type of stuff so that's honestly it's it's a big chunk of what i think about now uh, because I'm not just looking at this as, Hey, I want to make a game. I'm looking at this as, Hey, I want to make consistently profitable games. And the mistake that I think a lot of people make is when they're looking at how to make their game profitable, all they're focusing on is how do I make more money when they could be focusing on how do I spend less money? Right? Cause that was the way I talked about my company. That was the way I made my company profitable, not by making more money. We were getting the same amount of money per clients, but we were spending way less on the product and that's why i want to do these like three month little experiments like battle barn tactics is because it launches in august august 21st or something i picked the date i forget what it was uh but it at the as of the filming of this video it's may 20th so i've got three months uh to finish this game and i've so far we've got like 140 hours into it so it's going to be an under 500 hour project probably by the time we launch it um so that being said, I don't have to make as much money as I would if I spent a year on this thing, right? I can make a consistently profitable game by spending less time on it, right? And that's that's kind of the goal of, at least for the next, you know, I'm going to try this a few times. I'm going to try this probably two, three, four times at least to see if I can get it to work. Uh, but that's probably the goal over the next like year or two or three uh, that I see myself as far as game dev goes. Um, and then the last part of that number three, the, the, the part that like kind of ties directly into that though, is this whole, you know, they say fake it till you make it, but you should fail it till you nail it, man. 
You really should. Like it's entrepreneurship. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like riding a bike, right? It really is. You get on it, you fall off. You get on it again, you fall off. You get on it again, you make it two feet, but then you fall off. You get on it again, you make it 10 feet, and then you fall off. You get on it again, you start to notice that there's a, this whole balance thing, right? You start to get the idea of it, and then you might go somewhere, but you still fall when you make a sharp turn or something like that. And entrepreneurship is kind of the same way. It's like there's a lot of... It's impossible to succeed the first time. And I say impossible, and I know there's going to be the one person in the comment that's like, well, this guy succeeded on the first time, and yeah, he got lucky, and yeah, he's the exception to the rule. But, but if you want... The key word is consistently profitable, right? You don't want randomly profitable. That's how you build a business. Now, if you have some crazy runaway hit, Microsoft's going to pay you $5 billion for your IP. Maybe, but do you want to spend your entire life trying to get lucky? Or do you want to build a consistently profitable business that maybe is not going to be as profitable, but it's much more uh, sustainable and uh, controllable? And better yet... Better yet, when someone asks you, what did you do to be successful? You can tell them instead of just saying, oh, I made this game that people liked. And then, uh, you know, they just kind of bought a million copies of it. I would rather understand uh, what I do that makes better games, makes people more engaged in my games and stuff like that than make... Um, something crazy like you know money is money so like i'm not gonna be like hey i don't want a million dollars if my game's gonna sell crazy but it, but the likelihood of that happening is is low and i'm i kind of take a pessimistic approach to entrepreneurship i really do um and it's it's a downfall sometimes uh my my marketing company only started taking off when i partnered with a dude that was just like stupid head in the clouds like like just he would just thought so big that I was like that, that there's no way that's going to fucking work. And then there's me. That's like, you know, like being super pessimistic, like, dude, what are you thinking? That's insane. And then us together kind of balance each other out. And that's how we were able to, to kind of grow the company a little bit. So, um, I do think, uh, pessimistically. So, you know, it, take that what it is. If you're watching this, trying to learn something like that's just who I am. Right. So that's, I don't want to risk it all. For the biscuit and like just do crazy shit i want to i want to do uh what i know and i want to get better at what i know and i want to get get closer and closer to the target over time so that i can consistently hit that target right uh and that's what i'm looking at that's what i'm trying to do i'm trying to i'm not necessarily going to stick to a genre but i'm gonna make similar games that similar fans will enjoy over the next couple of years uh, I'm going to make smaller scope games. I'm going to do what I can to minimize the investment and the scope in those games. Um, three months might prove to be a little too difficult, right? Or it might be like my previous experience where the first three-month game is hard, but the second three-month game can use all of those assets, and the third three-month game can use all of those assets, and so on and so forth. So... Um, that's just kind of what I'm thinking about. And I'm, I fully expect, you know, failure along the way. And I, and when I say failure, I mean a game that's not profitable. And I also, to be extremely specific, um, my, my monthly burn is about $2,000 a month. I have very little monetary investment into the games themselves. There may be, you know, a couple hundred here or there for like music or things like that. Um, and then software, I don't really consider as like a cost of the game. That's like a cost of the business because it, you buy the software and then it makes all the games. Uh, so, so for a three month project with Battleborn Tactics, we're looking at um, I need to recoup about six grand, six to eight grand because it's a little more than three months uh, work. So, I'm being very specific about what that means, right? Uh, and I want to experiment with ways to do that. Uh, and one of the ways is to, rather than make more money, it's to uh, spend less. Uh, and that includes burn rate and my time and all that. So I hope that was helpful. That's just kind of a look into uh, what I'm thinking about. But I want to say thank you to these people right here because they help me keep doing what I'm doing, making a video every single day of the week. And I really appreciate that. If you want your name on this list, you can head over to patreon.com slash game of underground. Uh, lots of stuff there to help you build, finish, and launch better games. But my name is Tim Ruswick. 
and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.